you know, when you came to me, you came to me as someone who was working very hard at getting better. You were really studying. Um, you'd been to therapist after therapist, right? You've been to, you've gotten a lot of help, but you've done a lot of your own uh, seeking of getting help, right? You've read books, you've studied different ways to approach forgiveness or, you know, being, oh, I don't, you know, you're going to be better at explaining kind of all of the work you put into your self-help prior to coming to me. You found me on YouTube, um, and, uh, for, and you came to me specifically for, I'm assuming eating issues, thinking that maybe there's some way I can help you resolve your emotional eating issues with body image and whatnot. And you had some preconceived idea of what it was going to be like potentially, or and that I was going to be able to help you reach your end goal, right? Another effort of self-help. And during our sessions, I had identified that narcissistic component of, you know, there was one session in particular where it was pretty brutal. We talked about, um, I had said, look, you're fantasizing about this grandiose sense of who you should be and what your goals are. And it was very much self-righteous in the way you were vocalizing it. You didn't see it until, at, and, and I had positioned it in a way to where you actually saw it in one moment. And it made a huge impact, I think, in your overall perception of your um, own uh, be, uh, experience with abuse, being abused in abusive relationships, being an abuser in a, you know, and, um, since then it's just been this, uh, natural, I haven't done much guiding since then. Have you noticed that? Yeah. What you did, I mean, you gave me, you pinpointed exactly where it was that, um, just like the way I was comprehending um, circumstances, I guess, or emotions of mine that I was basically like, like in circles, you know, going over, looking for answers. And the only, I mean, I knew I wasn't solving it because things weren't getting better and, and I kept feeling more miserable. And, um, your, your perspective and, the truth, I mean, there were, what you spoke was so true. And so, you know, I, it was just so unconventional compared to all these therapists that I'd been to who always, I, I mean, I felt like, you know, they were, it was, I was like a math equation and, and they were going according to their psychology books and, okay, so she's A, B, and C, and therefore this is your problem. And it was more about kind of like just, the, you know, soothing me in order for me to keep coming back to them, but I never really solved anything. And at the same time, it was kind of enabling me to stay in this misery and in this, this state of basically self-destruction um, and, and delusion, real delusion. They didn't necessarily um, question the story that you brought to them, did they? No. Because you bring a story, right? You bring your perception of what what you've experienced. And yeah. one of the things that I do with everybody is I question your story. I actually, not to diminish its influence on your life, because it's clearly been influential in, in how you're suffering. But I, yeah. I really question um, why you take those positions and why, and why they're in, in maybe looking at questioning them. And so that opens up that self-exploration, right? Instead of exploring what the outside world and how you can cope better and how you can defend yourself from that outside position and control the outside world. It's very different approach to it. I think that what's really differentiated is you're talking about my story. I think everyone has a story, but you were less interested in hearing the details of the story, but more understanding how I was telling this story and why. Mm -hmm. um, at the state that I'm in now, the story doesn't even matter. I feel like the, in this entire persona, this like almost false life, because it, it was so important for me 
to define myself, I think it's important for most of us, we try to define ourselves by everything from our taste to music and clothing and the type of people that we hang out with. And you even say, oh, I'm this type of person, I'm that type of person, I'm interested in this and that. And then I felt like it was this constant, um, like, exhausting pursuit of matching me and my image and my internal with all this external BS that I that was that I thought defined me and that basically summed up my everything, my entire story. Yeah. And when you came and you suddenly took this outside perspective and you're like you basically don't really like care too much about the details. The details are not important. Um, it's it's why. Like what's 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 running this? What's mm-hmm. actually behind all of this? Like what is essentially not right um, at, the, at the root. And you didn't need to walk me through this. You know, I what happened was afterwards on my own because I suddenly, it was like you woke up my, my core existence, the very spirit of whatever I was since I, when I was a child and before all of the social programming was fed mm-hmm. to me and all these notions and concepts and and that the hierarchy of society and, and all these things were fed to me. When I was able to finally have this humility, real, real, deep humility, to go inside and connect with that. And, and, and separate it like, from, and, and you separated it from this, from the structures and the concepts from our, <clears throat> when we look at our ancient evolution, it's like our tribe creates these ideals and these systems and at some point you took that those systems and internalized it as who you are so you became these systems and ultimately the system tells you you have to be superior at this system so you can't just integrate and become an anthropologist of it you have to become it and then win right well, yeah, so that's the competition or duality of survival, right? It's that you, me, this or that. You know, that's that. Um, that's kind of when you when you said I was trying to organize and and decipher and who am I and where are they. That's like saying I don't know my security unless I'm comparing myself to a system other. and others and how they view me is real and I have to defend myself. It's very much so those ancient survival kind of lower state mammal space right and yeah. and that is that fear of death type of um how our brains respond to fear of death which comes from evolution around being fear fearing rejection abandonment disapproval so essentially it's being able to have the humility to be real like and the real and and to be able to see this the innocence that's there the innocence that's so weak most people, I don't think, go through with it because it really does feel like death. Mm-hmm. When you're raised and, and from from infancy, everything really is some sort of competition, whether it's competing against your siblings or being put through these ridiculous school systems, which grade you, literally. And, and, or religions. Or yeah. Mm-hmm. Religion, a hundred percent. Gender identity, like who you are as a woman or girl. Right. How feminine you are, how pretty you are. If you're listening to the right, you know, cultural things. How smart you, are you? How much money from, do you make? Absolutely. Yeah, what, and and that, that, that's, I mean, that's what you end up thinking that that's like the game of life is. Well, is not that's your security. Yeah. Right. Your, constant, your security is only a reflection of what's going on around you, which is so, like, I mean, it, it's it's completely unrealistic. It's an it's an illusion. It's an illusion created by exactly. by the. It's also yeah. completely. It's it's so subjective because it'll change. You'll see what you want to see depending on where you're at in life. Confirmation okay. bias, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we like, all do it. That's sur- yeah. That's how our brains are wired. Yeah. So if you're feeling badly about yourself, you'll see everyone who you think is if you perceive to be doing better within yourself and if you're feeling good about yourself then you're looking down upon everyone that you see is beneath you and it's a horrible way to live because you're not actually seeking your own 
joy or satisfaction, um, or to like do something uh, revolutionary or something authentic to yourself. So you're living out of your mind and not your heart. And yeah, extrinsic. That's, that's that extrinsic yeah. reward that oh, all of, that's all euphoric. Of yeah. Yeah. And, when you look and, back really quick at that, when you're fantasizing, and you can go back and go, you and, and maybe mm-hmm. see you spent a lot of time fantasizing. Yeah. And that was really, it's euphoric. It actually is stimulating that pleasure center of the brain because the brain's saying, well, the brain believes when you think something's going to secure that third hierarchy of need, the euphoria begins. I mean, because it doesn't know that you're using a system, it just doesn't care. It's like whatever it is that allows her to be accepted and whatever creates acceptability, you're going to get high. You're getting narcotic, whether it's spiritually getting high on this concept that God will love me, you know, whatever that is, um, your brain is saying that's a safe place to be, even though some of those systems are dangerous. Very dangerous. I mean, every, I think every single system has a dark side to it. If it's conditional, right? If there's manipulation in it, most systems are also created to keep you down. Whoever is at top wants to make sure that they're on top. So they let you climb, but they raise the bar. The danger was though, is how, how much this actually controlled my life. And, and it's very scary. I mean, my, my entire marriage, when I really look back on it, you know, a lot of it was that a lot of it was like, Oh great. I'm following the rules. Oh great. I'm, I'm, I found the good looking guy. Okay, great. We're, we're engaged. We have the right ring. We're going to plan the right wedding. We're going to have all the friends. Like we're doing everything correctly. We're winning at this game of life. We're following the program. We're following the system. You know, look at us, look at us. And it was all nonsense. And he, I mean, he, if we're talking about fantasy, he was, he had this massive fantasy. I mean, his, he completely like this overblown sense. And and I was completely, you know, swept away by that. Yeah, attracted to it. Completely, it made me feel secure as a woman, and this is what you need in a man. And it also gave me this sense of safety, you know, oh, I'm going to be saved. I never thought once about my own inner strength, about taking care of myself. You know, it was it, it was okay. Like, I'm going to have this, this knight in shining armor take me off, and we're going to ride into the sunset, and here's our fairy tale. And, you know, and, and it, the problem was that for, it was really good for a while. But when crisis hit, everything completely cracked, and I had nothing to fall back on um, internally because I wasn't anything genuine, like inside. I had no boundaries, and I didn't, I didn't really want important things because I wasn't living from a true place, from within me. Um, and, and my intentions weren't real either. It was all selfish, and it was all really to, to like, win this program, which is an illusion and, and is a fantasy, and therefore everyone's always going to be a loser in the end. There's no satisfaction in it. And no. You give, away, you give away all of your power. All of your power. You in, all in, of your power yeah. to, to, to the pursuit of a degree, to, to the, the, hundred, the, hundred thousand, the first $100,000 you're going to have in the bank, you know, to be climbing the ranks at your at your job, to hanging out with the right people, to be being able to get dinner reservations at the right rest, restaurants. Right now, when I'm looking back at it, it's like this ridiculous freak show. It's like this circus uh, that I'm like, oh my god, I, I can't believe I was in there. This these ridiculous, just childish, such superficial games, and everything revolves around it. And how much time and effort. And how much of your happiness is contingent on these these outside rewards? Like, I will only be happy when this. I will only be happy when that. And and what you're you're telling yourself is that until then, until you've achieved all these things, you are not going to be happy. And on a day to day basis, you end up suffering. You end up hating yourself. There's always someone else who's more successful because that's all you're looking at. That's all you're seeing. And the type of people you attract are people who play these same silly games. Yeah, they just confirm the same. Do- in theory, it's dogmatic 
Okay, so that there's it's dogmatic, meaning there's no leniency in the system that the elders are telling you, right? Like this is how you need to do it. There's no lenience. And the other thing is it's very much uh, brainwashing. Absolutely. That's why um, that's why you recover so immediately and so intensely. It was like that one moment you went, oh my god, this is this is crazy. It's not real. It's an illusion. It was like waking up from a, from a dream. Yes, and that's called brain brainwashing. I want you. Yeah. To, it's a social cultural syndrome. It is similar to Stockholm syndrome or battered wife syndrome. And you reason and rationalize around the level and, and all of that management because that's what you need to do to be a better human being. So these systems are your way to prove that you're worth something and you lose touch with the heart and soul that exists, that really has the power, right? That yeah. That is the authentic power of your humanness, right? on this planet, right? We are mammals on the planet, right? Having an experience. And if they can control, and I don't think people really know what they're doing. They just know that there's money being made doing it. Yeah. I just don't think that people could be in this state of awareness and still do it to others intentionally, right? Because it's, so they're coming from a survival state, and they're surviving off of climbing on top of everybody, right? Everyone. It's like... It's so they ridiculous. don't even know they're doing it. They just no. believe that that's what makes them better human beings. It becomes pathological and, no and sociopathic. Happy. No one's happy. No, but no they... No. Which is how no. consumerism works, right? That's how we can make you happy. You no can be accepted. We can... It's all distractions. Exactly. It's all, everyone's telling you, you the way you are is not good enough. This is everything from religion to beauty products. Everything. It, this the subliminal message is you are not good enough the way you are. Buy our blank and you'll be a little bit better. That's it. Or you need us without us, without this exercise diet program, medication, uh, you know, trip, car, house, religion. whatever it is. Religion, of course, without, you know, our connection to God or, our, you know, us explaining how to repent or the enormous donation you should make to our church. Without that, you know, oh, we're, we're, you know you're know, you not quite good enough as a human being. Now, it's we good. have the keys. We have proprietary knowledge about what makes a human being better, right? right. And you can't get that knowledge unless you come to us and, and we'll give you that knowledge. We're going to give you the right diet the right eating plan, the right um, way to look, the right way to dress. We're going to tell you everything you need to do to be accepted into our tribe, which is manipulating our hierarchies of need, right? And in terms of body image, I, let's get specific to that because to me that is, is it not one of the most obvious systems specifically to controlling women? And Absolutely. And, and men too. It's not just women, but it's yeah. men too. But how that directly impacts, you know, when the, this is the most, to me, it is the most obvious case of Stockholm syndrome, right? Yeah, because they're, they are controlling your life sustenance. It's not just we're controlling your access to feeling acceptable as a human being. Through these images we're going to give you, this is what you should look like, and our product will give it to you. And we're, people are going to love you, worship you, want to be you. And there are people that sustain it so it becomes real and true in the system, right? Yep. Thinner people are given power. Look at my before yep. and after pictures. I'm going, to start a, I'm going to start a blog, and I'm going to tell you how I keep myself thin and happy. You know, so there's this, right? And the then, level, so, the so. level of manipulation that's used with that, like. People using before and after pictures where the before picture is is usually the the after picture. They have them gain weight. And there's also, there's something called like the black swan where they'll choose one freak of nature who happens to usually be on steroids also. It's them as the spokesperson for the product or, you know, the program or whatever it is. And people just, people eat it up mm -hmm. because they feel inferior. It's a fantasy. Like, yeah. 
So I wanted to, I, I want to go back around though. And I was, I was getting back into this, the, the problem with the, the body image industry, which includes health image. Do you see that now? This idea that your body's health is like your spirit's spirituality. So it's very much runs parallel to religion um, and how religion can become that sense of superiority in that my beliefs around faith are better than your beliefs of faith. And I have proprietary knowledge of faith. And it's this concept of physical purity. So this orthorexic food purity um, way to feel um, safe in your in your spiritual culture with food. The problem with this is that, and, and why it's so devastating, right? Because there's all sorts of systems out there that don't create the same catastrophic devastation as the diet industry. You know, when you... I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's complicated? It's not. It actually isn't. So that's what I'm trying to get to. The issue yeah. is that we're going to hold your sense of worth, but for you to earn it, you have to... We are going to control your food. So right. look at the significance in, in specific to Stockholm syndrome or battered wife syndrome. It is in, it is like a form of brainwashing and yeah. the most powerful um, controlling mechanisms is that they control your access to feeling safe in your, in, in that group, but they also control life sustenance, like things like food, water, shelter. And so that's real. it's almost like taking that foundation of our psyche as mammals and they are controlling the access. It. It's two parts of it. It's all, it's yes, it's, it's not just your tribal need to be accepted. It's that it's played against your access to food. So it becomes insanely, it, it, that's why the suffering is so incredibly burdensome. All of that micromanagement around food, it becomes super insanely poisonous and you don't know, it's hard to get out. This is, in my opinion, why, why the statistics are showing that eating disorders have the highest morbidity rate. It's because it is that insane to take your social pack needs and to compete it against food. It's just, it's horrific. It is, it is, um severe uh abusiveness but Look, but they hide behind health righteousness so it's not abuse it's for your own good it's, it's it's uh it's like severe psychological damage and no. what something that you commonly hear about people especially like if they go on a binge is that they feel like they're on autopilot they feel like they're, they went brain dead in a sense no. And I think that it's just because you're 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 not in control. Your animal brain is in this crazy battle all of a sudden. The need to be socially accepted versus the need to just freaking eat and yeah. survive. Yeah, and the freedom on. to eat that food is what is more euphoric. It's not the food that's euphoric. It's the momentary time you have exactly. to eat it, and it in your brain is like, yes, you got your yes. food, and that is a huge amount of release. But That's with that comes the shame and the guilt of failing as a pack animal. So right. you have yeah. this war against your constant, constant war. Yes. And, and it consumes, it consumes everything. It consumes everything. your self-esteem. It, so this I think is the bigger problem. Like, first of all, I hate the word health. The word health has been so corrupted. Yes. The, the, the essence of health is your mental health. Is you feeling happy and emotionally fulfilled. So you know that now. You know that yeah. now. Right? Like I'm so people think I'm so crazy when I'm when I say things like I'd rather have diabetes. I would rather have gangrene and get my legs cut off. I would rather right. I feel like I would rather die for it than be overweight. There was a time where I literally I look at my younger sister, she's suffering hardcore from anorexia, and yeah. she would rather, she, I mean, she, she almost died taking these crazy diet pills. She would rather die. That yeah, so, so did I. So did I was in the same place where I would rather commit suicide to the perfect thin idle body than to go through what it takes to feel inadequate. It, that inadequacy, right, is huge in terms of survival. If you don't feel, your brain's going to go haywire. Um, that's why, to me, narcissism is not 
a personality. It's a coping mechanism. It's coping specific yeah. to feeling inferior. But it's, you need, yeah. in a sense, I mean, that just goes to show how strong of a devotion you need to feel like you're winning at the system. When I think back to what I put my body through, the bounce of starvation, the, the just like the um, compulsions to always have just the healthiest and the whatever, the food, the, the markets that, that I would go to in order to get the most organic this and that, you know, uh, social events that I didn't attend because they wouldn't have food that was up to standard or I was in a period where I was afraid to eat. And orthorexia. That, that's orthorexia. The, the kicker is the amount of exercise. I mean, oh. the amount of, of, of endless cardio that I spent hating myself just to burn off an excess of, of energy so that I could sleep peacefully at night is ridiculous. I mean, if I could only have all of that time back, you know, not to mention that's not healthy, that's <laughs> adrenal fatigue, that's Oh, yeah, thyroid problems, off. right? Thy You're destroying your body. Athletes, uh, hardcore athletes have a higher mortality, have died at a younger age than most people who don't exercise at all. You're abusing your body. This whole mindset of no pain, no gain, or the more the better is absolute madness. It's completely untrue. Completely untrue. If you, even if you want to like, you know, build muscles successfully, you literally can do it within 30 minutes a week, like three 10 minute sessions in the gym and you're strong. Great. That's all you actually need for health. You need sleep. You need water. You also just need to be like calm and happy. When you're eating and you're hating what you're eating and you're not actually allowing yourself this food, you're triggering all this stress and all the cortisol in your body. You're having the exact opposite effect of what you want. I mean, like, you, you, it, it's it's prison. You're trapped in this prison. And the underlying, what's behind it to, for women, to keep women down, to keep women not right now, this transition that I've gone through since I've become aware of this in this past month, me, myself, as far as what I want to achieve in life, as far as looking in the mirror and thinking, what the heck do I even find beautiful? And anyway, who cares? Are <laughs> bodies really that important? Mm -hmm. No, is the body that important? Mm -hmm. Why is the way the body looks that important? It's just the body that we're living in for this lifetime. We all know it's going to die. Every single one of us, the body that we're in right now is going to drop dead and rot into the ground mm -hmm. again. You know, be the earth. Mm -hmm. That's it. So... Isn't there more you want to achieve in your life than, you know, looking like a stick in selfies? Like, there should be more value. What is your true value? I was ignoring it. Like, I wasn't even, it didn't even occur to me to get in touch with, like, my sole purpose or, or, or you know, all the energy I could actually put into my craft or my work or my passions, the things that I really care about, the things that connect me to other people and make life meaningful and, and beautiful and powerful. And that keeps expanding. I, I wasn't even looking there because I was just stuck on this hamster wheel to have the, the you know, the, this body that I'm in look right. I mean, it's it's crazy. I, I, it's really nuts. It's it's a true mental illness that people subject themselves to unknowingly, and it consumes your entire life. And it's so sad. It's so sad that your self-esteem is built upon a number on a scale, which is like, you know, what, you know the, the amount of gravity that your organs and arms and legs have. It's crazy. It's just, it's mind-blowing. It's so tragic. It's tragic. Drops mic. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I'm just sitting over here going, that's right, that's right. You say it, girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it feels. It's unbelievable and people can't see it and you have to have so much compassion for them. How It took a lot of effort and will for you to number 1, the moment you came out of it had to come from a moment of humility. There was a moment you had the humility enough to say what Robin just said is true. Yeah. And you had the humility to expose that and all of a sudden it was like duh, 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 duh. Everything oh my I God, see. this yeah. is crazy. And the syndrome went away. Doesn't yeah. mean you don't go back, right? You kind of have to live in reality. And there may be things that you're not aware of, but like when we talked last, you had somewhat kind of gone back in. 
they'll never go yeah. back the same yeah. way yeah. ever. Right. No, you, you, I'll never go back. And the, the, the you know, it, it doesn't happen overnight because it's a matter of like, you have to kind of, um, restructure even just like your self talk. And because it is like your mammal brain, like sometimes this junk comes up like thoughts, like, and I, but it's almost like now it's like, no, that's not, I don't live like that's mm -hmm. not me anymore. No, you I just go like, into the vulner, you go into the vulnerability of not doing anything about it. I'd rather be rejected, abandoned, disproved of. I'd rather live off the side of a mountain in a tent by myself and live with the animals. <laughs> you know, you, you, you kind of go through that. Yeah. It's, it's miraculous, really, when you look at how much force and effort that you were putting into your self-help, which is really just co okay. Okay. coping how to, how to successfully I live in the system. I hate myself less. Yeah. How can I hate myself a little bit less? Yeah. You're trying to cope in the system and, and try to respond to all of the victimization you experience because of this or that. And now it, you could say this is, doesn't take effort. This really is eff pretty effort, <clears throat> effortless. All it takes is relaxation, right? To me, it feels like you're in the middle of the ocean and you just float on those waves. It's effortless. I can almost, you know, I can bring myself back to my center. Even, anytime it's just like, I'm like, no, that's not real. None of that's real. Like you can, yeah. when you find like the, the, the real, like your, your real inner essence and you start living from there. Yeah, that was, that's what I call my heart or my integrity. That's the language I use. It's like I just go into my integrity and I know it's pure and it's good and it's loving and kind and generous and it's peaceful. And it's this space of, it's like the space of nothing. It is so pretty. Okay. It is space. like, yeah, it's this it's just, space of, of just love and serenity and, and uh, just whatever. I just call it, I, I align with my integrity. Like my true, my trueness of the heart. So whether the outcome sucks, whether I, you know, no matter what the environment, how the environmental response is on the outside, it doesn't take away from the power of my integrity. That's context or content that backs my behavior, my words, my thoughts, my decisions as a human being in this space. It's like everything I just try to connect to the heart is simple as like, um, how do I want to what am I going to do today? You know, I don't know until I'm in today's space. And when things come in, I know I've got clients I'm talking to. I've got a dog. I got to take out for a walk. You know, there's life that's going on. There's, I am existing in this space time continuum. Yeah. But you're not judging your, not at all. No not judgment. at all in any yeah. way. It's like, I don't understand what's going to happen today until I'm in the presence of this and, and something comes into my bubble and I got to remember the bubble conversation that what, that was the session where I was like, I'm in a bubble and I don't know what I'm going to do until it enters the bubble. And there's no expectation or judgment or, you know, even if it's something like, um, you know, my mom passed away and my dad got remarried like a couple weeks ago. So it's only been three months since my mom died and my dad met someone and is married to him. And now he's selling off my, my mom's house and I'm going to go home and pack it up. I am in that space, accepting that my mom passed away. The whole thing hurts, right? Lost. You're accepting to her. I don't even know this woman. Yeah. I'm accepting. It's, it's like here I am as a mammal living in, in a moment of, real loss and sadness. That to me is part of life. I'm yeah. existing in that space of love that I have for what was my mother who is now in my history. Right. And my dad is moving forward and it, and now I'm having to continue to live in the space of my mother is dead. She's passed away. Right. And I'm going to go and I'm going to pack up her stuff and remove it from that one house, right? That is hers. Should I sit there and feel like a victim? No, you can. Right? You. Think of how much you extra just, work that would create for me to be like, my dad doesn't give a shit about his kids. Right? Doesn't matter. He's doing and what he needs to do. And you're going to do what you need to do. Yeah. I'm going to go help him. Yeah. You know, but that's like a, that's like one of those things that's, it's like, even in hardship, 
It's only hard when you don't accept it. Right. If you resist it. Correct. So when you resist them. It's it, like, this it is an inevitable part of like my, mm, this is in my bubble right now. Yeah. And resisting it or crying about it also wouldn't change what happens. You know, you, you can choose how to, how to deal with it in the, in the best, most real way. You know, be kind to yourself and, and accepting of this situation and cry if you need to cry because it's still pain and we are still human, but it just deal it like going with it. It's yeah. really just, I'm not, I'm not avoiding it. I'm not, and I'm not blaming my dad or I'm not blaming this woman who I don't know yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, we're sitting here and it sounds super easy, but, the, but the truth is that it is super easy. Even in terrible hardship, it just is a matter of accepting reality. Accept reality. Here is the reality I am in. This is the reality of what's in my bubble right now. And if I deny it, I learn the hard way that that's going to create more pain in the end, right? That that actually creates more more work, more everything. And even to even judge this reality that's occurring to me. I love my father. I'm going to be here for him the rest of his life he's making decisions that are best for him. And because I am connecting to my integrity, my integrity is peaceful and loving and compassionate. I don't have to tell him what he should be doing so that I feel better about my, so I'm safe from feeling grief. You know what I mean? So you no longer, the other thing is you don't necessarily feel, um, you don't need to control other people. Even if what they're doing is, potentially creating hardship. You yeah, but if I'm willing to accept it, is it really hardship? What happens to the hardness of the hardship? That's us. We make the we give it the title. Like correct. We, we have two people who go through the same exact experience and they'll both have it affect them. They'll choose to let it affect them differently. The same exact thing. Yeah. It's around so, how you position yourself, right? There's a positionality in there. How do you position yourself? Are yeah, you above it? it? You know, no. is there, no. you know. So they say like, uh, you know, the wheat stalks and the wind, you have to have that flexibility. Like, so you got you it. can't be too rigid. Yeah. It's be, a, that's what life is, you know, it's ups and downs. Everyone has shit days. Yeah. I mean, anyone who believes that there's no such thing, again, it's part of the danger of the fantasy. No one has this perfect, beautiful life. Everyone has dark sides. Everyone has demons. Everyone has shit days, has down times. You just need to, to learn how to move with it and not expect things to be good all the time because they're not going to be. And if you expect that, you are going to constantly have a really hard time when the hardships come along instead of just realizing, okay, that is life on earth. There's mm -hmm. ups and downs, and it's okay. And you, and, you'll, and you meet people, you meet enough people along the way, you have enough of these like gracious experiences where it, it, it can give you, you can really absorb that, that makes it, just don't have like expectations, you know, like don't, <laughs> don't give your power away to anything or, to, or anybody else either. I mean, it, it's just, a, it's really serenity. I feel like it's like, I'm living on a hammock right now and I'm letting things sway me, but it's okay. Everything is, is like calming, everything, the back and the forth. It's just like, you know, the rhythm of, of everything. It's, Okay, everything's okay. Like it's uh, you're in what's really called self-actualization or bliss. I mean, again, this comes from the fact that we don't, we're not starving right now. We don't live in famine. You don't have a bear running after you. Like we actually live in this incredible level of luxury. And so when yeah. you have all of this abundance that we truly live in, all of a sudden, and you feel okay. So there's the reality of the physical environment that we live in. That is so easy. We don't have to hide food from people trying to steal it, right? Um, that mammal part of us can relax. But the other thing is you feel inherently, intrinsically valuable. You feel valuable, not you feel acceptable. There's a difference, right? And it's just by existing. Yes, I am, I'm, I'm alive and I have this purity of my human 
humanness. And that is inherently valuable. No one can patent it and sell it to you at a church on the corner. Right. So, so you, what you did essentially is said, even if I suck, because this to me is so important, even if relative to every system out there, I am a pile of shit that has failed. I, not, none of that, none of that negative failure of me sucking as a human being is, can influence this purity of my integrity or the, the, the source of life that you have that is within the soul. Like, so if you make that valuable with failure, that's the key. It's not despite failure. Let's, let's negotiate around why you're so valuable, even though you suck. No, I suck and I'm valuable, right? That's very different than what you would hear somewhere else, right? Which is, we're going to tell you all the ways you don't suck, even though you failed at this and this and this and this, you don't suck because you're nice. Well, what if I do suck and I'm nice? Like, why do we have to be afraid of sucking? I don't feel bad if I suck. Makes and sense? The kindness is actually what is important. With suckiness, right? You don't have to say, well, I failed. And what makes that better is that I'm kind enough to make it better. Do you see how that's no, still negotiating? No. Reassuring yourself that, you know, well, you're not this, but you're that. It's Correct. Matter. That now you're getting, yeah. Nothing to everything. It doesn't even matter. There is no competition anymore. No, like, no. I don't have to, because of my inadequacy, create adequacy somewhere else. I am inherently inadequate. Yeah. I am inadequate. That's the reality of that belief system. If you can go yeah. into your inadequacy relative to the drama. I lost at all those games. I lost. And do you and isn't it the best thing you've ever accepted on in your life? Like the best thing ever. Because if you can go into I s I'm not pretty enough, I'm not young enough, I don't have enough money, I'm not educated enough, I have the wrong religion, wrong politics, I'm a terrible human being, everybody's gonna stone me, I'm I suck at everything. But even even with the suckiness, God, I have so much inherent power to be have an amazing life while I'm a pariah. So I'm a pariah and I love myself. See, that's what I think completely unravels that third hierarchy of needs survival is when you can actually accept, I am a failure because again, that's relative to any system. So if you can go into, I'm inferior. Okay. That would be the trigger to fight or flight, but I'm, I am valuable just the preciousness of I have nothing to bring that right there with this failure, right? If you can do that, what's going to suck you back down there? Socially, nothing, nothing because you're okay with sucking. You're not competing in anything <laughs> socially anymore. No. You and you've mean. accepted you are inadequate. Yeah. So I'm inadequate. I'm an, I am coming to the table, not trying to feel better about being inadequate. I'm actually feeling it. I'm going to come to the table with inadequacy and yeah, cool totally aware of it. Yeah. And I'm not going to defend myself, justify it. I am a failure. Yeah. I come in, I'm coming into it saying I lost white flag. I suck at it. Not because I don't want to have, um, uh, like I'm giving up or lowering my standards, but the reality is that I, if I come to this third hierarchy of need and I decide, okay, if I accept that every system out there has a standard set for me and ultimately I have to be real, the realness of me compared to the standard set outside of me. The truth is that I am um, incapable of that standard in reality. If I, if I accept that I'm inadequate, but at the same time, I, I am a worthy human being with those inadequacies. You're not playing you're that free. game. You're free. Exactly. You're, you're free. Not, that's 
something that you're that you're part of. It's yeah. Not... No, I don't have to. Um, the problem is that someone who negotiates with that. Well, I'm a failure here, and the way to feel better about it is to convince myself there. You're yeah, still right stuck. That. That's, yeah, like, that's like that's like self help that. books. Right, I tried that with the eating disorders, like, yeah. okay, well, I'm not as thin as her, but I'm a really good person, mm. or, like, I'm a really good listener, that's not, that's You're not still negotiating, life. correct. You have to be able to say, I like am inadequate in every sense of the word, in every your sense value, of... The value should not be, should not come, your sense of value should not come from any of those things. That's not the right way, it's not real. It's not sustainable. Mm -mm. It's all nonsense. And you'll never win. You'll absolutely never win. I, 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 it, it's all just like the game that was manifested. You know, and with the eating disorder, like, if you really want to look, like, for people to look at it from a different perspective, what are you actually asking for? Like, when, when I remember, when I, when I had this body that I wanted, you get, like, this, this envy. And, and hatred from other girls and you you're basically wanting to be like sexually desired by men like is that your work that's your work you want to be a body that's that that other women will will envy that's it that's an emotional response you want is envy and and it's like sexual desire that's what you want to be like those both just i suddenly realized like that those are like really awful things and really shallow things to to live to be, you know, in the world. I mean, yeah, it's kind of like when I say you bring, what are you bringing to the table? Your thinner body? Exactly. What's that sharing with the world? Probably not to the table. Unless you're, <laughs> but what now, you're bringing your compliance to a system. Right. Like, Oh, look at you. You're so beautiful. You're making the world a better place because you, what, because your body is thin. Yeah. Like, is that your calling in life? I mean, we've both been there. We've both been there. And it was like a sad state. It, it, just, it was like I had to compare that to this innocent, pure spirit that was there. Very childish, innocent, loving, sweet, kind spirit. You know, you compare that system and the worship and desire for worship and how that completely overrides the true innocence of the soul. Yeah, it's like, which one deserves to be honored? In the end, you even said, if you're inadequate, even if you are the worst, the fattest, the ugliest, the stupidest, the most evil, matter. you're. No, away from you. you refer back to, I feel like when I was a child, like I can actually, first of all, so many things, so many shitty things that happened to me in my life that I felt like I was repressing and I can see different instances and different issues that kept popping up in similar ways because I was repressing them because it's almost like you're also taught to repress things that feel bad or un are uncomfortable, you know, be a woman, be good, be this, be that. And you, you don't actually let things out. And yeah. And you don't understand it because of that. You don't look at it. You don't breathe it in. You don't understand it. You just have that feeling and you're trying to hide it. People get anxiety. People get panic attacks. Mm -hmm. People suffer from depression. Why? Because you're not expressing yourself. You're not, living from your truth, your, it's all facade, and these past couple weeks, I've had crazy memories from childhood, really uncomfortable, nasty bullying incidents, or, you know, being reprimanded for certain things that have surfaced, and, and it, 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 it's stressful, it, it's a very strange feeling, because it's something that's really familiar, because it's like something that's been there all along, at the same time, it's something that you're so used to running from all along, and to actually have like the respect for the emotion and let it just kind of rise up the astonishing thing is is that it vanishes afterwards mm -hmm. like it's just gone it doesn't matter anymore it's the craziest feeling and it does create more of that inner space it's like this shit that you've been carrying around your whole life why i don't know why because well, you're not afraid of those emotions anymore you know fear of those emotions I keep you kind of in that. inadequate like, they're part of me all there are no i realize there are no good or bad, good or bad emotions. Like they're just kind of like you know a reaction to something that happens that somehow affected you. But they're all like your children. They all just want attention. You have to like love each one of them for what they are and just like validate its existence.
emotions and they don't control you anymore. No, I really no and you learn to understand where they, what position you take that creates them because your position can create the emotional response. It's like a dial. Well, this one, yeah. I took this position under that circumstance and that created this emotion. What if I turn the dial? How would that change how I felt even though this situation doesn't change? Right. So I'm not going to change the situation. I'm going to change the position that I'm going to look at it. And how does that impact the emotional response? It's amazing to see it differently. But right. Same exact environment, totally different position. Just integrate who you really are. Just yeah. Like Going back and looking at my own childhood um, experiences with compassion from the child's position, because the child doesn't necessarily understand that there's more than one position. But the other thing is looking at it from, um, as an adult, from a variety of different ways to, to recognize that it's innocent. The whole thing is innocent. Even the people that hurt me, they're innocent. They're all ignorant. They all don't understand what they're doing either. So it's not like we come to this with all knowingness and intentionally hurt people because that, that's just right. That's, that's an illusion that we create as victims and to go into this without playing a victim. And it's like the willingness to experience for me, sexual trauma from a completely different uh, vantage point. I had to look at it with total and complete compassion to the boys that hurt me. Like why, what would bring someone's son to do this? Cause that person is someone's child and that someone has a, you know what, you come from it from a different place and it changes how you react to it. And I think that's an important thing to be aware of that your response to things often is based on how you position yourself and the, and the awareness that you have the freedom to take any position. You have the free will to, to um, observe your own two-dimensional, three-dimensional life from a four-dimensional position is so freeing. It's very empowering to realize for me that I could go back and relive this exact life and I have this awareness that allows me to relax into it. That even the things that were very harmful, um, the things that were very um, you know, difficult. I had a teacher that used to pull my hair. She would be frustrated with me in the middle of class in front of everybody. I've had multiple occasions where I've had, um, teacher student abuse and I go back and I can see it from such a different place to where I don't feel bad and I don't judge the teacher and I don't have that victim aware. You know, it's just like a, an overall love that you bring to the situation because ultimately the position of love yeah. is the most powerful, yeah. the yeah. least forceful, yeah. the most powerful. Completely. Cause it's, it's almost like you can say, you know, if I was that person and, and I had, and I was in that situation, I would have reacted the same way. Totally. When, when Under the same context, that, beliefs and situation and their, their issues, right. we would, right. we are identical. Psychological yeah. Conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. I learned that when I was willing to commit suicide, I realized that I am no different than someone who commits murder. Like I understand how horrible this feels. My body is that destructive to my psyche and it wasn't my body. It was the systems I was believing in. And under those circumstances, imagine that it's not your body, but it's your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. That is exactly. like, I was like, this is what it feels like to actually murder. And to feel the need to murder for your own freedom. Yeah. You know, the amount of whatever it is, twisted pain and hurt mm -hmm. and, and projecting hurt. it. And that I was doing so the same. Bad. I can have compassion for it from my own twisted understanding of it anyway. So yeah, the freedom, the freedom to realize that, um, everything is for the most part, it's innocent. It's, it's all based on ignorance. Human behavior in general is based around ignorance. We'd make decisions thinking we know, 
And um, until we have the outcome, we realize we don't know. We don't know anything. I know. It's, so it's to delude ourselves that we have any yeah. idea. The future is is complete. Like it's a it's a pretty much a waste of time. Yeah. Like, well, if you think about like the great so space of knowledge, right? There's so much more space than there is stuff, right? If you look at just the earth, look at how much empty space there is rather relative to matter. Yeah. Right. Well, it is all negative space. Right. So when you well, look at like the potential of the human brain, like why even position yourself to be the smartest? Why would you do that? That immediately keeps you from growing. But the moment you are accepting and willing to say, I am unaware, that opens your potential of awareness, just in the willingness. It also can open your imagination and your possibilities. When you're yep. no longer following a program, suddenly, and you're no longer trying to predict the future, suddenly you realize the future is magic in a sense. Like, you have no idea what will happen, and anything can happen. The only thing that's limiting anything is you. The more you're following something like a certain framework, you're not you're, you're not giving yourself that endless and infinite. Yeah, if you're in fear, if you have any fear, right? That would be that lower mammal state, right? Fear. Fear comes yeah. from um, really it comes from death, the concept of death. Yeah, it's, it's so if you have fear, projection. you're yeah. Fear is a false projection on the future. Mm -hmm. It's it's just and it's based on the past, you know. So you're not, li so you're living in the future, you're living in the past, and then you're missing out on the present, which is actually where everything is going on, and it's right here, right now, you know, and that's why some people, I think, feel like time is just passing by really quickly, is because they're not engaged in the present, they're too lost either in what happened, or afraid of what's going to happen, and they're not living, <laughs> they're no. not just me, life new is me. Yeah, well, that comes from checking those three boxes. Yeah. <laughs> Food, water, and shelters, and I'm valuable with failure. Yeah. Once you can do that, all of a sudden this paradigm shift happens. It's like your brain functions differently. It is like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. That guy was a genius. Yeah. He had to have experienced this to create that pyramid. The concept of it. He had to have experienced it, right? To, well, look, yes, I believe that, like, you know, Jesus, whoever Jesus was, he probably also was some sort of enlightened being. But the way that that was taken and used in order to like, keep other people down and say, oh, he was the son of God, he was the only son of God. And it's not true. Like, we're all children of God. Pretty much. Whatever it is, this yeah. absolute infinity of, of life, we're all a part of that. Every single one of us, you know, we can all climb there if we want to. You just have to let go of everything. Surrender. Anywhere, it's just going inside and realizing it's all there already. Yeah, if you are willing, if you have a willingness to die and um, you accept death, you're more likely to relax into life, right? Yeah. Where it's like, Please. oh, you don't, you're not, you're less likely to be attracted to programs. You're less likely to, um, hurt another human being you're you know there's so much it's just a different way of being isn't it it's like there's the way of being yes. in survival and then there's the way of being out of survival and like fear death yeah. it's like when you fear death like you're you're like okay crap i'm i'm, I'm gonna die and i've got to get it all in no matter what it takes no matter who i hurt you know get it all in do it right i've only got one life to live you know live fast die hard all these like stupid slogans that people have <sighs> Like, and then you're just at the end of spending that, like, chasing things. And it doesn't even matter. Like, we all die in the end. It's okay. Like, we're all going to. <laughs> so, uh, what do you have to say? This is an hour. We've now recorded an hour worth of us saving the world, right? Um, <laughs> what do you have to say to the listener who may be still listening to this going, what is this? <laughs> Right? It's that, I want that. Maybe I should go buy another self-help book. No, no, it's not. Well, you can help yourself. Yeah. You don't need another book and you don't need another program. You know, if anything, you can have a conversation with Robin or someone like Robin who will really just, like, help you understand that there are, 
You're not looking for anything. You don't need to be looking for anything. This isn't a journey and there are no expectations and there are no rules. Like your experience in this world is really what you make of it. And as long as you are thinking that you need to be doing something, you need to be on some sort of wagon, you're limiting your, your, your own ability to actually become your full potential of, of who you truly are. You're not even in tune with who you really are and you will never be happy. You can try, but you'll never actually find peace. Peace is within you. Peace is learning to love yourself unconditionally and truly unconditionally. Not if you're like this or if you do that, just for being who you are. And it, and it flips life inside out. You stop being a consumer and you start being able to provide energy and give people love and comfort. And people will recognize this in you, that they won't feel alone when they're around you because you're just human, the very essence of, of life. Um, and we should all reach this. I mean, it's like people need to wake up, wake <laughs> up, like get out of this. Stop spending your money on stuff that you don't need. You know, if none of this stuff is going to bring you joy, like connect to the people around you, connect to yourself. That's it. This the world will shift entirely if, if everyone can just get out of their own way. Yeah. And relax into reality. Just you yeah, got to be able to do it with happen. the limits of, exi of existing now. Like whatever you are in now, make that work. It doesn't come from hiding, pushing. You just go into the presence of now and accept be, the willingness to accept that. Try it. Yeah, be willing. <laughs> just try. Be willing. That will is so powerful, man. Just a will. That's all it takes. Thanks for letting me share this. Curiosity. Curiosity, like you were a kid. Yeah. Like you're discovering everything all over again every day. You don't need to control it. You're just open to it. What's going to happen? Exactly. And you're excited to find out whether it's it falls over or it gets whatever. It's just, that's human. That is a, a, a human element that's pretty amazing is our own curiosity. That's, that's such an incredible part of being a human on this planet. You know, and we love to see it in other animals. That's the coolest thing is watching a dog be curious or watching a, you know, um, a different mammal have curiosity. For some reason, it's like we feel so connected to that. 